Um, yeah, as uh, Paul was saying, I, I joined the Green Party in 1988, so I'm now old. And um, I first stood for the Green Party, in, I think the same year, Phil, was it? 89. 89. So, yeah, I'm coming up to uh, 30 years of having stood as a Green Party candidate. Um, but so what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about my experiences as a councillor, but also how I got there, which I think is probably just as important for anybody who's thinking of becoming a councillor. Um, now, what was very instructive was when I got to the county council in 2013, was watching uh, UKIP floundering around. And it was very entertaining, watching their numbers drop as they either um, resigned or went to other parties, and then of course in 17 they were wiped out. The point being, um, they, they came on to Essex County Council, I think all of them pretty much, with no experience whatsoever. They hadn't done the things that we often do as Greens, which is go to the parish council meetings, get involved with what's happening in your local town or village. And they just walked into council offices thinking they were going to change the world, and they got very disillusioned and it didn't work out. And they, they didn't have those community roots, which I think we've got as Greens, which is a huge advantage. So before I got elected to Braintree District Council in 1999, um, I'd already been doing about 10 years of going to parish council meetings. Um, in those days, we had it on um, uh, Braintree District Council, we had an environmental forum. And apart from anything else, you'd get to see the mechanics of how things work. Um, because going straight into being a council can be a bit daunting, particularly if you're on your own. A lot of Greens are on their own, or might be in a small group. So if you're thinking of becoming a council, I mean, I'm probably, you know, teaching you to suck eggs, you know all these things, but if you are, and if you haven't done these things, is go to local parish council meetings, find out what's happening locally, in terms, you know, there's, there's probably all sorts of campaign groups you've got who are linked to the council, and see the mechanics of, of what they do. So in 1999, when I first got elected, for um, an hour, I was the only principal authority Green Councillor in the whole of Eastern Region. There had been one previously, um, I think up in Norfolk, uh, and then my uh, partner in crime, Phil Hughes, joined me an hour later um, on a recount, and, got, and he got in by three votes. So <laughs> it was a good recount. Um, it, and then it, it, but it took me uh, 24 years to get elected to the County Council, which was very hard work, head-banging stuff, took a huge amount of effort. Getting onto a county council is a much tougher gig because, as, as you probably all know, the, the divisions are much bigger. So my county division includes four district wards. So you've got to either come first or a good second, probably, unless you do exceptionally well in one ward. You know, you might get third in, in one ward. But you've got to do well in all four wards. And we know as Greens that, that again, is tough. Tories in particular, and, and in particular in Essex, in almost anywhere, can rely on doing well in pretty much every ward. Um, apart from some of the more urban areas in Essex, um, they, will, they will do really, really well, and so you're always up against that. And I'm very pleased to say that our county seat was taken off the Tories. Um, now, in, um, what was it, earlier this year, wasn't it, time flies, they threw the kitchen sink at us to try and take the seat back, uh, and failed. Not by much. I think my majority first time around was 60, my majority second time around was about 90. Come on, come on. 93, 93. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, it was very tight. But what, actually, it was, um, I, we, we, we nearly got beaten by UKIP in 2013. I knew the guy, the candidate, very, very well. And he just put out this, um, this A5 flyer, purple on one side, yellow on the other, which if you could sum it up very briefly, just said, I don't like foreigners, basically. That's all it said, in effect. Um, and he nearly won, and he told me actually at the count he didn't want to win, and he was really glad I had one. And he said the same thing in 17, actually, as well. Um, but the, the UKIP vote, actually, ironically, was pivotal to us winning, because in 13, the UKIP votes depressed the Tory vote enough for us to just beat the Tories. And in 17, we knew the UKIP vote would collapse and a lot of them go Tory, so that gave us a game plan that we knew we had to put on about 400 votes to hold the seat. In the end, we had to put on nearly 600 votes to hold the seat, because the Tories threw the kitchen sink at us. But it was a, a real delight to see them beaten um, again, twice. 
So uh, our district seats, by the way, were taken off Labour, and I think that's the other thing that shows that Greens, we can, we can take seats off anybody, um, but I'm not going to pretend it's not sometimes very, very hard work. So that's a sort of basic history. Um, currently, um, I'm on my own on both Braintree and um, Essex. Uh, previously, I was in a group of two on both. Uh, we lost um, the second district seat to the Tories in 15 on the same day as the general election. And I have absolutely no doubt that had it not been a general election that day, we would have held that seat. There was also uh, a real problem. There was a big boundary change. And the boundary change included a ward where... Um, there would only previously been one councillor for like 50 years and a lot of the people in that ward who voted Green just voted for me, they didn't realise they had a second vote. And my biggest regret is we didn't stick a fly around just saying you have two votes, almost nothing else on it. Um, but anyway, we're, we're hoping to win that seat back, um, uh, is it next year? The year after, 19, yeah. Um, county seat, we lost our second county seat in Essex, Michael Hoy unfortunately. Uh, he actually polled very well. He did, he did, within a few decimal points, exactly what he'd done in 13. But unfortunately, the UKIP vote in his division collapsed entirely to Tories. <coughs> and the Tories went from 30-odd to like 50%. There's not a lot you can do about that. Obviously, if anyone gets 50%, you, you're not going to win. Um, so, being a councillor, well, I'd say the, the advantage we've got as Greens is that... Um, Although I know, it, you know, and what I'm saying applies to here in Essex, so it may not apply elsewhere, is that we can act very independently of the other parties. And sometimes that gets really confusing. I mean, Phil and I used to have great fun with Labour in particular on Braintree Council when we were together, because Labour, well, and the Tories worked to this really strict whipping system. Labour, in fact, worked to a script. And often we could see their script because <coughs> they sat next to us. So we knew exactly how they were going to vote and what they were going to say. And occasionally, me and Phil would vote differently. Only occasionally. And it really confused them. <laughs> How can two people from the same party vote differently? So, but that independence is obviously really key to us. And I know we've been suffered elsewhere. Greens work with other parties. I've, I've got to now, because if I'm on county, um, if I didn't, I'd be on my own and I wouldn't have access to anything. So I'm now in what's called a non-aligned group on county, obviously still standing up for Green Party policies and as a Green Party councillor, but it's a, just a marriage of convenience, if you like. The only thing is, I'm in with, um, I don't know if you know Kerry Smith? No, no react, no react, yes, <laughs> Kerry, Smith, Kerry Smith is ex-UKIP and um, has some very right views on a lot of things. And I did say to our group, group leader, Chris Pond, who's a lovely chap, uh, in a true independent. I said to him, um, I do have concerns about being in the same group as Kerry Smith. And he said, no, it's all right, we'll manage it. You carry on doing your normal thing. So far, there haven't been any clashes. However, if there's a debate about climate change, there will be. Because Kerry Smith famously once stood up uh, during a county council uh, debate on climate change and said, I don't know what's this problem with carbon dioxide, there's a lot of carbon in this table here and it's not doing me any harm. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this sort of level of debate. Um, so yes, uh, but we've got it, we, we've ju I've just seen a draft motion we've got going to uh, county uh, for the full council meeting in December. And Chris has been very good. He's, he's suggested it actually because he thought it would be a good vehicle for me. So he's been very collegiate. You know, and actually, so we're, go we're going to do one on air quality. And um, to my amazement, Kerry only wanted one clause taken out about uh, electric charging points. And actually, it was a fair point because it was, it was basically dictating to the districts how they could do electric charging points. And the motion couldn't really do that. But I expected him to strip it out of anything to do with protecting the environment or better air quality, but he didn't. So, you know, maybe he's turning. Maybe, you know, I don't think he's going to join. <laughs> Um, so yes, at the moment I'm on my, on my own on both councils. Um, that does limit the amount I can do in terms of getting motions through. But um, I've increasingly over the years focused more and more and more on casework. Um, there's not a lot of mileage actually in Essex for getting grand motions through. Um, occasionally it can have some effect, but, but mostly um, my thing is casework. And people do value that, so trying to get things fixed for them. Um, in Essex, potholes is a huge thing. Um, 
people come people come to me from outside my ward to try and get potholes fixed <laughs> on a regular basis, which is a bit naughty because strictly speaking, I should be well. I do sometimes go to the local county council and say, you know, I've had this approach. But sometimes it's just as easy just to report them. Um, but the only other thing I'd say about the current situation is, for those of you who are councillors, may know this already is. Um, we, we, there's a great uncertainty about the future of local government in terms of funding, what the trajectory is. Um, Essex County Council's trajectory is terrible. Um, as things stand, within a few years, they're going to be, the majority of their funding is going to go on social care, which is, you know, we need to fund social care, but it means there won't be the money for the other things. And we're seeing cuts to mobile libraries, to rural bus services, to children's centres, to uh, highways panels. I'm on the highways panel. I think it's a it's one of those rare things you could actually say is something close to localism, where local councillors get together and decide local safety things like, uh, you know, uh, zebra crossings, uh, it's the cycleway, that type of thing. Um, our funding for that has been halved, and it could go down again, so we've got very little money to do. If, if I told you a zebra crossing can come in at anything between 100 and 150 grand, and our budget for the whole of Braintree District is 400 grand for the year, we can't fund a lot of stuff. It used to be nearly a million. So that downward trajectory on funding is going to have some major implications for local authorities um, in the next couple of years. Um, but I mean, just to finish off, I'd say the biggest draw for becoming a Green Party councillor is that sense of independence, the sense that you can work with local communities proactively without having the heavy hand of a big party behind you telling you, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. Um, and working with others. And, you know, as I said, you might end up with some surprising bedfellows you can actually do work with. You never know. I mean, there's some people, you know, I wouldn't work with out of principle. Um, I would not work with a BNP councillor. Not that there's any left, I don't think, now. Um, out of principle. But um, so long as people, you know, are reasonable um, and you don't have a direct cause not to work with them, I'd say always try to, because particularly if you're on your own or in a small group, you don't really have any choice. Otherwise, you won't get anything done. Anyway, that's that. Thanks, guys.